Hello HEMA friends, today I'm here with my friend Kit, uh, instructor from Scotland and uh, we, um, uh, he's holding a, a seminar here in uh, Valsesia uh, in these days and um, we, want, uh, we have taken the occasion to show you some stuff comparing the Fiore and uh, the Lichtenauer tradition. Most people can observe many similarities between Fiore and Lichtenauer. There are also differences, of course, there's always differences. I find the differences to be very interesting because they show some of the, the tactics and some of the, just the flavour of the system. So we want to take a look today at the Zornhal with Ort, one of the, one of the bread and butter late hour techniques, and we're going to compare it with a, a similar technique in Fiori. And although it's going to look very similar in many ways, we're going to pay attention to some of the differences to, to see if we can find out why they're different. So, to compare uh, the um, zone of arch action, we take, of course, the crossing at Mezza Spada uh, uh, situation in which we see something very similar to zone of arch. Very similar, but not the same. So we'll analyze specifically, as Kit said, the differences between uh, the two approach. Okay, let's see. So there's three kinds of situations that often occur when one person attacks with a, a descending cut and the other person responds with a, a defensive descending cut. The, the situations are where the defender has complete control of the situation, where the, the, the two swordsmen are struggling for control of that situation and the third one is when the attacker has complete control of the situation, uh, perhaps because they've changed the attack into something that does something else, or perhaps they were just very strong or very forceful, or their mechanics were superior, or whatever. There's quite a lot of different reasons that one fencer or the other might end up in control. So the, the first scenario, where the attacker comes in with the Oberhau, uh, the defender responds with the Zornhau on top of it, and the defender takes control of the situation, Lichtner's response is very simple. If you're in control, just stab him in the face. Don't complicate it, just stab him. If you're in control, just stab him. Nice and simple. <laughs> well. Uh, Fiore have more or less the same idea. When the opponent is striking at you, you want to do well. Probably the approach is slightly different in the uh, counter action. Maybe we can classify the counter action more as a well, a beating or a parry. A parry is better. Uh, and uh, you are uh, uh, searching for the opponent's sword. You try to beat aside the opponent uh, attack, and then you trust toward the opponent. Generally, this trust is, go is done by moving to the side uh, to while you're right. Uh, but uh, the general approach is more or less similar. Okay. 
the second situation, where both fencers are struggling to, to control the, the bind, the centre line, however you want to call it, uh, is again quite common. Neither people want to, to be weak or to, to lose the situation, and therefore this happens quite a lot. Lichtner's response, as the book says, um, paraphrasing from, from Ringek here, is when he, he holds strongly against you, become stronger against him, wind your short edge against his blade, go up with your hands uh, against him, turn the point towards him and stab him in the face. So what this does, rather than trying to go around, or r rather than trying to, to shoot straight at him when he has sufficient cover that that will not work, we take control of the bind. Once I have, got, once I have control of the bind, by turning my short edge and going up with my hands, which effectively puts my, my strong on his weak and means that I no longer have to contend with, against his strength. It then leaves me relatively free to turn my point towards him and stab him in the face or do any of the other actions from that place. The important part of it is not to rush into the thrust but to take control of the bind first. Once I've got control of the bind I can play with him and do a variety of fun things from there. Well, uh, here is why, uh, where the uh, approach changed a little bit, while Lichtenauer seems to take strength on the bind and choose for this option. Uh, Fiore strangely uh, mm, uh, tried to uh, change the, the line, so creating a, basically a new line. And this is where the step that we have seen on the first action takes uh, uh, more value because we are exiting from the line uh, and trying to stop the opponent on the throat as we have done in the first action but uh, while in the first action we don't have problems because we have beaten aside the opponent's sword in this situation we are mainly trusting into the bind because the, the opponent is, is pushing us aside and we shoot straight by moving aside keeping the bind and trusting at the opponent's throat so with the sidestep that you did there, uh, you created the, the new line against me and that meant that my weak slid down into your strong. Yeah. Which is a different, it, it's, it's the same end result, but it's a different way of getting there from what Lichtenauer does, which is to apply your own strong onto the other guy's weak. Yeah, that's true. It's a, in some ways, it's the opposite, but it creates <laughs> the same uh, exact ending situation. Yes. The third situation, where the attacker ends up in control of the centre, the bind, however you want to call it, uh, again this can come about in a variety of situations. Sometimes the attacker sees that they're not going to be successful with their attack and so they turn the sword to try to give themselves an advantage in whatever happens next. Uh, sometimes they just come in with such strength or such good mechanics that they take the, the control and maybe there's not so much the defender can do about it. Or maybe the defender just drops in a poorly performed defensive action and it doesn't quite work as planned. However we get into that situation, the attacker now has the stronger situation in the bind. It's not possible to shoot straight against him, but with the strength of his position it's also not possible to, to do Vinden against him because he's simply too strong for that. I, I could try and do Vinden against it, but I'd have to do a lot of movement, I'd have to spend a lot of time 
getting to the right, situ uh, right, the right position and in that time he would just do something and hit me. So in that situation where he has taken control I just leave the bind because he's no longer directing his threats towards me. At that stage he has attacked my sword and so I can take my sword away from his attack and cut round with something like a Tzverhal to the other side and I'm free to do this because he's not giving me any threat anymore. Well, uh, in the Fiore uh, manual we have um, more or less the same options but uh, it is also accompanied with uh, a more important one uh, which is the Stretto options. Now this is mainly depending on uh, the strength of the opponent, the uh, um, weight of the opponent, it depends on f from what your opponent you have to choose between the Stretto and the Lago options. When you uh, choose for the Lago options you will uh, use the Gioco del Villano play which is more or less similar to the action you have shown but in general we strike more like simple cats like a Mandarito or a Roverso if it's needed uh, letting the opponent uh, go aside when uh, we are choosing for the uh, strato option we are rushing inside our opponent letting the opponent go aside with his sword because it's not more threatening us as you said and we go for a pommel strike it can be done uh, with uh, one hand and uh, accompanying it with uh, the left hand on the elbow as I have shown uh, in uh, this video but also there is a variation with two hands <coughs> so what we see is that although there are certainly similarities between the, the Fiore and the Lechner approaches to these three bind situations. The, the rationale behind them can be quite different and you might end up in a similar kind of situation that looks very similar, possibly even that feels quite similar and you know when you're being stabbed in the face it, it all feels quite similar. <laughs> <laughs> but the rationale, the, the reasons for why and how you solve the problem and how you get into that end result uh, can, can differ quite a lot. So generally speaking Lichnauer is, is standing his ground, he's attacking into the incoming attack, not trying to beat the cut out of the way necessarily, just oh, as the settle says, when he cuts you cut also and just do a good job of it so that you have the advantage. Fiori seems to move a little bit more, yeah. perhaps, to try to create the advantage that way. Yeah. And so, at the end of each each play, you know, maybe the, the end position looks very similar, but the way that we get into there and the way that we conceptualise how the solution plays out can be quite different. Yeah, of course. And uh, in fact, this is what I um, wanted to, to see in this video. And uh, well, uh, it, uh, it's working very well. I will uh, thank you very much, Kit, for helping me. And You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much. Uh, guys, remember, if you want to uh, subscribe to my channel, if you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, of course. If you want to see more of my stuff, uh, give a look to my Patreon page. You will uh, see the link under this video. Thanks for watching and uh, well, see you next time. Take care.